Hi guys. Hi my little precious babies. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chanel Long Time No Talk. Today I'm building a French chateau because I'm realizing that basic standard American suburban homes are boring. At least to me they are. French chateaus are often very symmetrical on the exterior. The word chateau refers to a large French country house or castle often in winemaking regions aka it's a rural castle. The one I'm building here is quite large, but I wouldn't consider it a castle by any means. It ends up having two bedrooms, three bathrooms, a sunken pool, and a pool slash carriage house in the backyard. I'll put some reference pictures up on the screen of the types of homes and architecture I was referencing while building, but they aren't giant castles. Oddly enough, this style of home seems to be popular in the state of Texas. I say oddly because Texas is what I imagine the antithesis of France to be. I also tried in vain to only use two custom content collections. I mean, it was a great starting point, I guess. <laughs> and technically, if you download this house and only have the Chateau collection by Felix Andre, the entire shell of the house with wallpapers and flooring, windows and doors and the kitchen will all be there. So then you could easily renovate it or just use it as a shell in your neighborhood if you don't want to actively play in this house. Right now I'm going through and picking out the doors and windows. I went back and forth between Pierre Sims, Domaine Duclos, and Felix Andre's Chateau, but decided on Chateau because I wanted a more elevated look as opposed to a rundown, quaint countryside place. This house is elegant, opulent, and an attention whore. Just like me, babes. <laughs> We are unfortunately working with medium wall height today because it just seems like this house would have high ceilings. Oh, I'm also building this on the Optimus Outlook lot in Newcrest, which is 40 by 30 tiles and longer than it is wide. I was concerned about how much space I had on this lot, but once I add the pool and landscaping, things really start to fill out and I realize I don't have as much space here as I initially thought I did. So I did cheat a little and use these columns from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection. Listen, I needed a basic squared off column with a teensy bit of molding to round off these corners and make the trim look more intentional. It's not my fault we have the most useless styles of columns ever in the base game, but ooh bitch, these columns were testing me. They did not want to go on the outer corners of the second floor and I have no idea why. Does this happen to anyone else? This isn't the first time I've run into this problem, but it really pissed me off. Normally, I would just drag the columns up so they fill up the whole wall, but I couldn't do that here because I was working with medium walls and a trim, which blocks the columns from going any higher. I decided I would just try to hide those corners with some tall bushes and trees, and it's fine if you don't look too closely. <laughs> And props to me for doing some landscaping right away before I get into furnishing the interior. I don't normally do landscaping right away because, um, well, it terrifies me. It really does do so much for a house in terms of curb appeal, but I find it so boring and tedious, which is ironic because I love landscaping in real life and I'm big on plants and creating succulent arrangements in real life. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I only have the base game and I'm just bored of looking at these same plants all the time. One of the main features of Felix Andre's Chateau set that convinced me to go with it for the exterior was the stone stairs, iron railing, and rounded stone step end pieces. They are so perfect, I use them all the time. I went with black window trims and accents because I saw this picture and fell in love with the classical shape featuring a modern twist. The black just pops against the white and beige and adds more depth to the otherwise flat facade. Chateau also has several types of windows and doors, both rounded and squared, so I could mix and match pieces without it looking monotone. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean. And magically, I already have the whole floor plan figured out. How convenient. Yeah, I definitely didn't cut 15 minutes of footage of me drawing and erasing walls. What are you talking about? Like the exterior, the rooms are very symmetrical. Each room is the same size, just mirrored opposite the main staircase that divides the house in half. So when you first walk in, there's a formal entry or foyer with two doorways on either side of you. 
The one to the right leads you to the formal dining table, which is connected to a very large kitchen, and the doorway to the left opens onto a formal sitting room or parlor. It was important to me that the house floor plan reflects the same formal elegance that is the exterior of the house. I imagine that the Sims who bought this house want to preserve some of its historical charm since the house was probably built a long time ago. However, beyond the three formal rooms lining the front of the house, it opens up into a much more relaxed family area. Of course, I used the fabulous kitchen set included in Chateau. I used it in my Goth Manor remodel and I use it again here, sue me. I've got this little 2x2 two two room connected to the kitchen, which I make into a pantry. It's entirely useless, your sims can't actually do anything with it, nor do they need that storage, but I like making pantries because it's realistic and why not? It's more space to display kitchen clutter, which you all know I love. This time I actually remembered to include this adorable mini ladder, which snaps onto the pantry counters. I did a combination of closed cabinets and open shelves. The shelves are from Pierre Sims Domain du Claw. At this point, I'm still very determined to only pull from Domaine du Claw and Chateau, and I was able to use only those two collections to furnish the pantry. I think that says more about me than the custom content sets, considering this pantry is extremely small. Domaine du Claw has some of my all-time favorite decorative pots. I use these in almost every single kitchen. They remind me of Le Creuset pots, you know, the really expensive cookware from like William Sonoma. I stick a couple of those in here. And up to this point, I was doing so well with tackling one room at a time and trying to decorate it in an organized fashion, but I got distracted by the various items in the Domaine du Claw catalog, and if I didn't pull them aside now, I knew I was going to forget later, so my organized plan of attack went out the window, and I start jumping around from room to room, adding little bits here and there. I go around and add curtains on every window in the house. The single windows get these gorgeous formal curtains from Chateau, and the double wide windows are covered with some basic drapes on a rod from Domaine du Claw. The breakfast nook table is from Chateau, but the chairs are from Felix Andre and Hey Harry's Organic. I just like the shape of them better than anything else. They felt informal and comfy enough for the vibes. I really like how the black accents look with the black windows. It kind of cuts through the softness of the white and beige, and I don't know why, but I associate black on white with a more modern feel, so it kind of helped bring that out, even though the shape and style of the furniture is still very French chateau. Returning to the kitchen, I'm just lining the back wall with a bunch of counters and figuring out where the appliances will go. These fridge nook cabinet thingies are so great for making the fridge look built into the wall and I always try to use them in all my builds. I love when appliances are built in. In real life, it might be a hassle because like, what if it breaks? Then you gotta rip it out, but this is a sim, so it's just for looks. We don't worry about functionality too much over here, or at least, our definitions of functional are different from reality. I love a big kitchen, but this kitchen is borderline too big. It's got some empty space that I wasn't sure what to do with, so I just left it. It kind of bothers me, but there's also lots of empty walkway spaces throughout this house, so let's just say it's part of the design style. I do fill out the rest of the kitchen with an island and dishwashing sink. I put a prep sink in the pantry, but now that I'm thinking about it, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Why would you need a sink in a walk-in pantry? It'd probably be more useful in the kitchen, but whatever. I'm not changing it now. I also added some full-length cabinets. I don't do this nearly as often as I could. To be honest, I forget it's a swatch option on the cabinets, but sometimes it's nice. It just adds a little variation to the kitchen, makes it look like there's more storage, which in real life is always welcome. In The Sims, it's not necessary. They can't open these cabinet doors, so it's technically a waste of space, but we definitely have lots of space to waste in this chateau. And you guys, look at what I'm doing. Literally, this has never been done before on my channel. I remembered in the moment of furnishing to add a trash can and smoke detector. Like, who is she? No sprinkler system though, because it's fucking ugly. The color swatches are hideous. I need EA to refresh the sprinkler system in the base game to have a plain silver, black, and white option. That's such a random small ask that I don't think many other people care about, but I would be thrilled if they did that. 
Speaking of EA, I've been seeing so many unhappy simmers on Twitter talking about how laggy their games are since the latest DLC release and update like a couple weeks ago, and also how buggy these paid packs are. As someone who doesn't own any paid add-on packs, I can't really join in on the discourse, but it just makes me all the more wary to buy packs for The Sims if they're not even going to properly work in-game, or worse, cause major bugs like deleting save files or crashing the game. As you all can see, I have a large amount of custom content in my game, but I never run into any issues with it affecting the performance of my game. But to be fair, I also don't actually play the game all that much since I'm primarily a builder. Some people have been suggesting to boycott purchasing DLCs from EA until they get their shit together. I can appreciate all the work they're doing creatively on the back end to create new packs and give us what we want for our gameplay, but, but I'd rather have few very high quality packs than lots of packs that don't work right upon first release. But who am I to talk? I'm not gonna buy new DLCs anyways. I've been thinking about purchasing an old expansion pack when they go on sale because I'm getting a little bored of building the same three worlds and want different landscaping and environments for my builds, but I'm not sure which world to get. Let me know if you have any thoughts or recommendations for me in the comments below. Anyways, I got a little carried away with all the Sims community drama and talked right over what I've been doing since moving on from the kitchen. I knew I wanted a piano in here because this house just felt like they would have an upright piano. I wanted to get the one from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection originally because it's got some ornate details and incredible swatch options, but Lil Shoddy was too thick, so I went with a slimmer one from, I believe, Felix Andre's Florence Collection. It sits closer to the wall, so it's not in the way of the open doors. I picked out some chairs to go in the parlor room and then finished off the dining room. Most of what I'm doing right now will actually change later on, so I'm not too worried about pointing everything out. Well, I keep these bookshelves and the fireplace in the parlor, but I mean I swap out the formal dining room and living room furniture. And yes, even though I branched out to different collections a few times already at this point of the build, I'm still fully convinced I'm going to use primarily Domaine du Claw and Chateau. Which is why I use the living room set from Domaine du Claw in the informal living room right now. And then as I'm adding books and decor to these bookshelves, I realized it simply won't be enough to only pull from the two French inspired collections. So I fully gave in and pulled clutter objects from wherever I felt like it. If you're ever curious where you can find a specific item in my builds, you can always leave a comment and I will get back to you, but I'd also encourage you to check the description box of my videos. I do my best to link a majority of the CC you will need to download this build and try to link you directly to the creator's Patreon pages or website so you don't have to worry about accidentally downloading malware. Now that I have this newfound freedom to go through my library of custom content and use whatever I please, I returned to the kitchen and went ham with the clutter. Like, I just set everything I wanted to use on the floor so I could look at it all together and then decide how to arrange things. I also pulled a ton of framed artwork in black and white frames, mostly from Pierre Sims' Domain du Claw and Woodland Ranch to create little gallery walls. Wall decor is necessary for medium wall heights because you have so much wall space to work with, we gotta put it to use. I rearranged the kitchen just a tiny bit to make the placement of these appliances and extra decor make more sense. I made sure to leave one counter completely empty so your sims can still cook on it. However, be warned, I didn't fully playtest this build. I know your sims can do all the basic things like find a bed to sleep in and cook and all that good shit, but I can't guarantee every little thing can be used by your sims. I'm glad I somewhat playtested it though because I did something with the landscaping that completely prevented my sim from entering the house either through the front or back door, and I wouldn't have ever known had I not playtested it. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in a little when I return to the outside to do the backyard and finish the landscaping. But anyways, I add the finishing touches to the kitchen and then I move across the house to the family room. I was still trying to use primarily Domaine du Claw and Chateau so that you could download this house with only those custom content collections and still have a majority of the furnishings or at least be able to tell which rooms are which. But like I mentioned, 
I was trying to strike a balance between classical ornate French and minimalistic modernism, which is not a decor style I'm very comfortable with yet. When I think of this style, I think of Boana Sims. I was really trying to channel Boana and I just wasn't feeling how the sofa and armchairs looked with the rest of the room. Looking at it now, I think if I switched out the rug, I could have made those couches work, but the rug is from Pierre Sims' new Stefan set and I was way too excited to use it. I couldn't let it go. Sometimes I get too excited by new custom content that I'm like, I need to use it in a build ASAP. I just want to play with it as soon as possible like a new toy. The Stefan's kit is a mini collection. I think it's mostly meant for kitchens, but I used some new cabinets from that set upstairs in the hallway as well. And instead of a TV console, I placed more of these shelves from Domaine Duclaw all the way across the wall, which visually unites the couch area and the toy area. I didn't know what else to put in the little bump out to the left of the TV area, so I made it a little toy corner, which is very realistic for a family home. Kids things are usually all over the house, not just in the kids bedrooms. I'll admit, sometimes kids are an afterthought in my build, so I'll furnish a kid's room, but you wouldn't know there were kids if you just looked at the rest of the house, like there's no toys scattered around, or high chairs, kids dishes, messes, anything like that, so I felt this was a little bit more realistic. I added a toy box for my Shuno-san, and then some empty woven baskets underneath the shelving. I placed various toys in these baskets, although I don't expect them to be functional, which is fine. There's a whole dollhouse and toy box plus more stuff upstairs in the kid's bedroom anyways. Before I completely have a change of heart and switch out the living room, I move on to the downstairs powder room. I only show this one bathroom in the speed build, but I feature the upstairs bathrooms in the screenshots at the end. Neither of the two CC collections I'm basing this house on have a full bathroom set, so I had to resort to using these chateau counters as a vanity. I know a lot of builders who don't play with custom content do this, but girl, there's way too many gorgeous custom content bathroom sinks and vanities to use kitchen counters again, so I rarely do this. Plus, it takes up a lot of wall space, but that's all fine in here because I only needed a toilet and a vanity anyways. I went with Felix Andre and Hey Harry's basic collection for most of the bathrooms, again just trying to be conscious of where I pull from so at least all the main furniture pieces are easy for me to link for you guys in the description box. Okay, and now that we've pretty much finished the first floor and I have a better idea of how this house flows and the decor style, I return to the exterior. This time, we're doing the backyard. I go with a very similar landscaping around the back as I do in the front. I was trying to find reference photos for how I should landscape this lot and I saw a lot of spherical bushes and hedges and some of those animal topiaries too. Overall, just a very well-groomed and manicured garden. I know I use the llama bushes and I think I'd go back in later off camera and replace some potted plants with the elephant topiaries. I would have liked to include the flower beds too, but the flowers in the base game were either too wild and overgrown or just not the right style. The romantic garden stuff pack would have worked great with this build, but too bad I switched Steam accounts and lost my free access to that pack. Actually, speaking of free packs, the Backyard Stuff Pack is available for free download on all PCs and Macs, so if you don't already own it, you should definitely go download it from the EA app or Steam right now before you forget. I just downloaded it, but I haven't even had time to open my game and look at everything that it comes with. I look forward to incorporating it into future builds. I think it'll come in handy for more summertime themed builds. Right now I'm sizing up these debug square stone pavers to define a pathway from the front door and connect the backyard to the front. I should have known when I was placing these and my sim moved out of the way because she can't stand on them that they were going to cause some issues but I wasn't paying attention. But basically, your sims cannot actually walk on these pavers. It must be something about the footprint because your sims can only walk around them. They see it as like a 3D obstacle. So I was scooting these paver stones all the way up to the stairs and when I was recording the screenshots, all my sim could do was swim in the pool. I just assumed she was really into swimming and must be super athletic, but eventually her knees were going down, so I was trying to get her into the house to feed herself, and then I was like, oh, you're stuck outside because you can't get in because of these stupid pavers. 
I wasn't willing to sacrifice them altogether though, so I just rearranged them so they weren't up against the stairs, meaning I had to redo the entire terrain paint too, and that was a pain. The pool area is fenced off and separate in the backyard, so it's safe for the children and pets that might live here. The fencing is from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection. And just looking at all the open lawn space across from the pool was low-key freaking me out. I didn't know what I was going to put outside, so I figured I'd build a guest house. I was planning on furnishing it, but I was getting tired of looking at this build and I hadn't even gone up to the second floor yet, so I was like, I'll save this for last and if I have the time and energy to furnish it, I will, but if not, I'll leave it empty and if you download it, you can do what you want with the space. I feel like most people change up the builds anyways when downloaded off the gallery because maybe not everything downloads or you want to personalize it for your own gameplay, so yeah. Let's just say I was absolutely thinking about your guys' gameplay needs and totally not being lazy. I didn't do anything crazy for the poolside area, just some pool trim from Felix Andre's Grove collection and armchairs from Hey Harry's Coastal collection. I add some lounge chairs from Felix Andre's Colonial set and then close in the lot with these debug plaster walls. There's a lot of great fencing options in debug and live edit that are perfect for placing along the edge of your lot. The game won't let you draw fences or walls less than one tile away from the edge of the lot, so these are the lengths we must go to for curb appeal in this godforsaken game. I was having some trouble getting the bushes to not clip with the house or the plaster wall, but if I had to choose one, it was going to clip with the plaster wall because who cares about screenshots from the back corner of the lot? Like, nobody's gonna see that, but we will see the inside of the house and guest house, so if you see bushes poking through the plaster and cement wall, like right there, no you didn't. <laughs> I finish up the landscaping, add floors and wallpaper to the guest house as well as the curtains but I do all of that off camera cause it's nothing new or exciting. And when I go back in the house, you'll see I changed up some of the wallpaper but mostly just the furniture. I left the kitchen as it was but the formal sitting and dining rooms didn't have enough black accents in there and I already told you guys how I felt about the family room. I was trying to let it sit for a bit and just see if it grew on me, but yeah. After I finished the exterior and came back to the house, I was still not happy with it, so I switched out some of the ornate pieces for more streamlined modern furnishings. The plush white armchairs in the parlor are from Hey Harry, and I raised up some pillows from Pierisim in a black and white stripe pattern that feels very modern French to me. I think I associate it with boulangerie awnings. The dining room still has a long table. I can't remember if it was black before, but the chairs are from Felix Andre's Paris set. You know, I don't gravitate toward these chairs often because they look uncomfortable to be honest, but I really love the design of them. They look so sleek and modern, but with a touch of whimsy and playfulness. The Soho bath mat I sized up to go under the dining room table and chairs doesn't fit the room. Like, what I mean is that the rug stops right in between the chair legs, which is highly offensive in real life interior design, but this is The Sims, it's not that serious. And without the tool mod, there's no remedy for the situation, so I just ignore it, and you should too. <laughs> As for the family room, ah, uh, the dreaded family room. I'm still not 100% happy with how it turned out. I can't put my finger on it, but something just feels off. I moved the circular rug from Sim under the art easel. Bad idea in real life to have a white fluffy rug under an in-use easel, but aesthetically cute in The Sims. I replaced the living room rug with a much larger one from the Live-In Rum set, and then opted for my favorite sectional from Felix Andre's Shop the Look set. And since the shape of this room has so many hard right angles, I thought maybe I could soften things with a rounded corner sectional, but you know what? Maybe that's what's throwing me. Because then it doesn't look centered, the rounded piece is competing with the sharp corners, the end piece. Does any of that make sense? Maybe I'm just being picky. Whatever. It is what it is. I keep the sectional, just change it to a very dark gray, almost black color. And then the coffee table is from Felix Andre's Paris set, which I really love this coffee table and how modern it looks. It goes great with this little area, like the way it's positioned diagonally, it fits with the sectional perfectly. And the funky shape brings a more modern feel to the room. 
Moving along to the second floor, so the stairs are facing the back of the house and up the stairs you spill into a giant long hallway. I hate hallways in my builds because I think that they're a waste of space and I find them really hard to decorate and also showcase in screenshots and things, but sometimes a giant hallway is just necessary and unavoidable, as it was in this case. There's nothing crazy about the hallway, just some benches and pretty natural light. At either end of the hallway are the two bedrooms, neither of which are en suites, but they do have their own separate detached bathrooms accessible via the hallway. And right now I'm kind of jumping all over the place, placing furniture as I see them, but then I settled on getting the kids room together first. It's a baby pink nursery with this delicate bramble and bird print wallpaper. I tried to put as much as I could think a baby Wait, what? That didn't make any sense. I tried to put as much as I thought a baby might need, but honestly, I've rarely played with the babies and kids because they stress me out. I mean, <laughs> I mean in The Sims. Also kind of in real life because I do that for a living, like I'm a nanny, but, um, but yeah, in The Sims, I'm just not interested. I would be, but it's so hard to raise kids and it's glitchy, so I, I just can't deal with it. I guess this is more like a nursery for showings. I also added a toddler bed in here, like the two young children share the room because while it's the same size as the primary, it just felt too big with only the crib and baby things in here. There was a lot of empty space. But also kids grow so fast in the game, so maybe the toddler bed is just there for when the baby ages up into a toddler? I don't know. It's up to you. I combined some things from Felix Andre and the Clutter Cats Very Licious because the swatches and vibes matched perfectly with this room. Like the toddler bed and the tulip side tables and dragon plushie are all from Very Licious. I really took my time to clutter up this bedroom though. I added a money trash can to the diaper changing table so you can recycle those diapers and bottles for simoleons, even though that trash can is fugly. And then it's on to the secret home office. I say secret because I'm using the hidden doorway bookshelves in the hallway to hide the entrances to this very long home office. I was imagining the sim who owns this house is maybe a successful freelance artist, interior designer, or business owner. And so it's got a lot of space for other sims like an assistant or team to work in there as well. This room has beautiful views of the backyard and I feel like I did a really good job of mixing the more classical French style with a modern twist in this room. I used a lot of Felix Andre's Berlin collection and I love how it looks. It's practical and aesthetically cohesive. Finally, we have the primary. I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of the speed build, but I gots to. Otherwise, I'm gonna ramble well into the screenshots portion of the video. The primary isn't anything crazy. It actually ends up being smaller than I anticipated, even though it's the same size as the kids' room. Double beds just take up so much floor space. I don't even have room for a dresser or closet. Your sims don't need a closet because they can change without one, but it's always just nice to have one in the bedrooms. They do get a fancy marble fireplace and frame TV, as well as this beautiful canopy over their bed, which comes in the Chateau set. The nightstands are from Pierre Sims' Calderon set. I have never, ever used them before, but I feel like they have a very specific design style that just so happened to work perfectly in this build. I added a mini gallery wall, some seating from Pierre Sims MCM, and a full length mirror from Chateau, and that is it for this build. Thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you're a real one, and you should absolutely subscribe if you haven't already so you know when I post more speed builds like this one. If you'd like to download this build, it is available on the gallery. Just make sure you toggle the include custom content checkbox on the left side panel. Otherwise, my builds won't pop up. You can find this and all my other builds on the gallery by searching the hashtag professional woman child or the hashtag the crimson shade. This info is also copied in the description box below as well as majority of the custom content used in this build. Please give this video a huge thumbs up. Your support means the world to me. I will talk to you guys in the next video and enjoy the screenshots.